Uh, this is Sean Alpha with a very special interview here for Geek Era Podcast. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is uh, Blaine Hodge, a.k.a. Static. Um, I'm excited to be here, and um, yeah, hopefully I can give you guys some insight. Cool. Uh, before we sort of get into you know the meat of the story, the reason why I was so interested to get you onto the podcast, mm -hmm. uh, you're you're an accomplished uh, hip hop artist. How did you get into that yourself? Um, I started doing music about ten years ago. Um, it, at first, it was just kind of like something cool that I did in high school, and you know I've always had a mad like uh, a, a big love for music. And so I just decided, you know, this is what I like to do, so I'm going to pursue that. And so I started, you know, just making music with my friends. And then I started doing, you know, my own solo things and just really creating the music the way I wanted to make it. You know, it was uh, it's, it's for everybody else, but it's also for me at the same time. And um, that's how I started really kicking that off. And I made a name for myself in my city. And um, <laughs> I was continuing to make a name uh, in, in other places. And uh, then um, the stuff last year ended up happening. So then everything kind of just took off from there. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think one of the, you know, I started listening to your music when I came across uh, your, uh, your Spotify. And I think some of the, the best song, uh, best lyrics I ever come across was uh, that song, Otaku, that you did. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Otaku's a Otaku's definitely a a fan favorite. Uh, I actually made that I made that song in 2016, um, just because I'm a huge, huge, huge like anime head. Like, like all I do is watch anime. Usually, you know, if I'm if I'm gonna watch anything um, on a streaming service or TV or whatever, I usually just watch anime. So I was like, I'm gonna make a song about anime, you know, <laughs> and um, and that ain't Otaku came out of it. And uh, it it just kind of, man, everybody loves that song. You know, anybody who comes across my music, that's usually like their favorite. And I I don't blame them. You know, it's 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 a fun song, um, especially if you if you're into anime. Even if you even if you're not into anime, you know, people are still bobbing their heads to it. And I think that's uh that's really unique. You know, and and that's where you know you got something special. Oh yeah. Uh... You know, how, how did you actually get into anime yourself? Um, let's see. I started watching anime, you know, kind of just like um, any other kid, uh, as far as like when I started, like, you know, with Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! and Digimon and, and you know, like the, the kids WB and like the, things like that uh, for, for, for the U.S. and stuff. That's how I started watching when I was a kid and I started watching, you know, Dragon Ball Z and stuff. And I just thought, oh, my God, this this new show. And then I started to get older and I was like, dang, this show came out like back in the 80s. Like, that's crazy. You know, like, oh, <laughs> um, uh, that's how I kind of got hooked into it. And then just the whole concept of like heroes and like protecting your friends and stuff is usually like a big one for, for anime, you know, because it's fantasy. And um that really stuck with me. So it, it just made it to where it was one of those things that, you know, a lot of people will watch, uh, you know, certain things when they're kids and then they grow out of it. But anime is something that, you know, you don't just grow out of because it's not a, is that that's the difference between anime and a cartoon, you know, you don't just grow out of it. Like, like it kind of just grows with you, you know? So uh, that's how I got into anime. Um, I'm thankful and grateful for anime. Like that's like definitely one of the things, and it might sound weird, but I don't care, but, um, anime is definitely one of the things that I'm most grateful for. Oh, it's definitely, you know, wh whether, you know, you're, you're feel, you know, dealing with loneliness or depression or something like that, it, having something that you're able to connect with. Right, right. It's, it's, it's an escape, you know, like, you're, like, I <laughs> usually, uh, you know, when I take my lunches and stuff, because I do a lot of work on my social media and stuff like that. So when I take my lunches and boom, I'll, I'll just watch some anime, you know, to kind of just shut my brain off a little bit, you know. So um, anime is very special. And I, I think uh, it's not something to be underestimated. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's get into uh, set the story for us of how, you know, what, what brought you to on this podcast, really. Oh, right. OK, so. Um, Basically, uh, last last year in September, um, 
there was an incident at a Starbucks in the, in the city that I live in, it's Bakersfield, California. Um, and uh, uh, basically, uh, to give you the short version really quick, um, a woman came in and she was being chased by a man with a machete and he began to attack her inside of the Starbucks and I intervened and, you know, it ended up, I ended up saving her life and getting a bunch of injuries myself. Um, so that's why I'm here on the podcast. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys are uh, enjoying. I hope your interest just peaked because um, I really get into it and give you guys all the details and stuff and let you know what happened. Uh, yeah, I guess it was a, uh, it was a crazy day. It was a Sunday, actually, you know, so that, um, that's not usually what happens on your typical Sunday afternoon, you know? Um, uh, let's see. I guess I'll get I'll get more into it. So basically, uh, to, to give you the, the full story now, um, I was having a meeting <laughs> at Starbucks. I was actually late for that meeting because I had a performance the day before. Um, and it went crazy good. Um, it was a kind of a small venue, but we packed it out. It was like 100, 110 people in there. And, you know, I had everybody singing otaku, you know, so I'm so I'm hyped. This is the next day. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm on top of the world. But I woke up a little late for this meeting and I was having a meeting for um, the uh, convention that I created. And the convention that I created is called The Watchtower. Um, it's a comic book anime convention slash hip hop concert. Um, so it was very special. I was able to pull it off last year and I was thinking I want to make it bigger and better for the next year. So I've been having, you know, periodic meetings. Um, so I was having a, you know, like, I think we were on our third meeting for, for the year for the, for, for, for 2019's con. And, um, the meeting was going really well, man. We made a lot of good progress. It was like, okay, cool. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. And, I'm sitting there and I'm hungry and I'm like, okay, you know what? Um, I'm probably going to go to In-N-Out and get a burger. Um, it was across the street right after it. And um, then all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking at the doors. I'm always looking at the, at the entrances and exits and stuff. I'm, uh, I was a security supervisor for my normal job. So that's kind of just, just out of habit, you know? And um, the woman runs in, she just busts in. It's like, it, it's like if you were just sitting at, at any old regular coffee place, you know what I mean? Like in your area. And then just, you're just having a conversation and boom, she just bursts in and she's like frantic and she's screaming, help, help. You know, this guy's, this guy's trying to kill me. And, um, she, uh, she runs behind the counter and she's frantic. Like she's just like, she, like, she's freaking out and she runs behind the counter where they make the coffees and stuff. And then this big giant guy comes in and he's like looking around. He doesn't say anything. And he has a big old, like he has a big giant machete in his hand. And he starts, he, he, he gets, you know, he, he catches up like where, where she was running. So boom, he starts running after her. And I, I guess I was, man, I was already out of my seat, you know, running after them at that point. Cause I was just like, Oh no, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't just do nothing right now, you know? Um, and I was just thinking like, okay, maybe I can, you know, because for work as a security supervisor, I de-escalate situations all the time, like all, like every day, you know? So I'm thinking I can talk this guy down and get him out of the store and, you know, everything's going to be fine. And then, so I'm running and I hit behind the counter and they had already, they were already like quite a few paces ahead of me um, because I wasn't, I wasn't super close to them. So I'm really just running, trying to, trying to play catch up and I get behind the counter and I'm like, okay, as soon as I hit this corner, I'm just going to get him to calm down and get him out. And boom. So I hit the corner and he's, he's already slashing and um, stabbing her repeatedly. Um, she had reached a dead end because of the way the, um, the way, the way the behind the counter setup is for, for that Starbucks, it's, it's, it's shaped like an L. So you got your cakes and coffees. You got like the registers. You got the area where they they make the espresso and and, then, and the coffees. And then you have like the drive-through window. So it's it's an L shape. And she she hit that drive-through window and realized she couldn't get anywhere else. And she just kind of huddled up. And so he began to attack her. And you know the Starbucks employees are trying to get her get get him to stop. You know, but they're but they're scared. You know, he's he's thrusting and stuff with the, with the machete. And, um, you know, they don't want to get in the middle of it. 
And then at that point, I just, I just looked at her face and she was just like, it was just like, help me. Like, you know, she couldn't say anything. She was just for like, she, it was like a scared animal or something. I've never seen anybody that, um, I've never seen anybody that terrified in my whole life. It was, um, it definitely wasn't a sight that anybody wants to see, but I think if anybody saw what I saw, they would have, um, possibly run in and done the same thing but so that was a, it was kind of a, one of those things where you know um I feel like the universe was just like okay you talk about you know heroic things and you you make this music about these heroic people you know let's let's see what you got and so I ran in and I grabbed him and I kind of threw him across the coffee bar and the problem with that was that I was trying to create some distance between the two and the issue was that she ran the direction that I was throwing in. Um, as soon as I got my hands on him, she was able to kind of, you know, I think her adrenaline kind of kicked in and she was able to start running away and she ran the wrong way. Um, and uh, so he he didn't really even like lose his balance. Like he, <laughs> he was still up and he still had the machete in his hand. And um, at that point I was like, okay, I need to do something. You know, I think I can take the machete or break his arm at this point. I do, uh, I do martial arts and I've had plenty of weapons training and stuff. So, um, I figured, okay, I can, I can do that. And so I stepped in to do that. Cause it, he, he wasn't too far away from me at that point. And he wasn't looking at me. It was like, he didn't even notice that I, that, that I had grabbed him. Like that's, that's how, that's how much in a frenzy, like he was like that. He, he just wasn't even. It was like he wasn't human, you know. He, he he didn't say a word. He just he just had this angry expression the whole time, and so boom, I moved in to take the machete, and then I slipped. Um, There's a lot of uh, liquid and stuff on the floor, you know, no mats and stuff, and boom, I slipped. And uh, as soon as I hit the ground, it, it's, it's I'm a heavy guy. I'm like I'm like 200 pounds. So as soon as I hit the floor, it was like it kind of rocked me a little bit, you know. It was like holy shit, and. Um, it was like, as soon as I hit the floor, he noticed me like <laughs> his, his, all his attention just turned to me. So I'm fighting him off on the ground, you know, with my hands. Um, and he's, while well, he's kind of just trying to hack at me and hack at me. And he, he'd caught my right arm, uh, in hand really good. Um, cause that's what I was using to defend myself. And then he tried to thrust and, um, and he stabbed pretty much stabbed me in my chest. And, um, I grabbed the machete with my left hand. And he, I caught it before he was able to really pierce me. He, he left a scar there, but um, I caught it with my hand. And then so I started to, once I realized I had it, I started to pull it and, you know, to try and take it away. And he realized I was starting to pull it. And I think he started, he started to get pretty shaken. Like, oh, oh crap. I don't know. Hold on. I don't know what's going on here. And um, he, uh, he pulled it back. Like he, he yanked it back. So, you know, it's, 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 it's in my hand and he sliced my, he sliced my left hand pretty good on the palm. And, um, I was out, like, it's crazy how your adrenaline works. Cause I was already, even, even in that, in that pull back, I was already like getting up off of the floor. Um, and a dude, you know, he was looking at me like, Holy crap, I got to do something to, to stop this guy. You know, um, he's, I'm wasting too much time with him. And so he takes a baseball swing at my leg, try to pretty much take my leg off and, I moved, moved, I moved just enough. That way he, he ended up filleting my knee down to about my shin. And, uh, from that point he was like, okay, I, I, I've done enough. I need to find the woman. Cause at that point she, you know, she was out of sight. He couldn't, he, he couldn't see her. I couldn't see her. And, um, I was just like, holy crap, because <laughs> I got up and I was like, I got to get up, you know, like that there was a point where I was just like, holy crap, did I just get stabbed? Like, <laughs> like, you know? you, uh, your, your, your body, everything starts to just register and everything was, you know, it was like, it was like everything was moving in slow motion. And, um, so I got up and, and I'm up and I'm like, okay, I got, I got to stop this dude. Like he's going to kill this lady. I was hoping she had got away. And, um, so I got up and I, I moved, uh, I moved behind the counter some more and I moved to the backside because it, the way the counter set up, it's, it's split to where it has the side where the coffee is being made. And then they have all the supplies, they have the syrups, they have like all, all the stuff they use to like actually make the coffee. And he's throwing, you know, he's throwing things down and, you know, trying to find her, he can't find her. And, you know, I noticed the storage room was closed and, and it's pretty much locked. So I'm assuming that she went 
and locked herself into the storage room. So, um, you know, she got away pretty much. So at that point, I was just like, okay, I got to get out of here. You know, I'm not 100%. <laughs> you know what I mean? This, this guy's going to be a problem behind this counter. And so I got around the counter to, to where the open area is in, in that Starbucks. And I, I uh, ran into my buddy that had came with me. You know, he pretty much had, uh, I believe he pretty much overcame his fear. He was like, I'm going to go help him at this point. And, um, you know, he, he froze. He looked at me. I'm bleeding everywhere. And he's, I mean, he, you know, he, he was just like, holy crap. And I was just like, Joe, come on, man. Like, we got to go. You know, grab my phone. Grab my bag. We got to get out of here. Call 911. I don't know if anybody's called anybody yet. So we get outside. And, you know, the way predators work is, um, you know, if they can't get the person that they were trying to get and somebody got in their way, they're going to go for that somebody that got in their way. So we get outside to the parking lot. And um, Joe starts to head over to his car um, and he, he says he has a first aid kit so that he could stop my bleeding because, uh, you know, for all the, the wounds that were inflicted, my, you know, for my arm, he had slashed several tendons in my, my hand and my arm. So it's, it's, it's not just like bleeding. It's not just leaking. It's like spewing blood. And um, uh, Joe was thinking he could try and like, you know, wrap it up and, and stop the bleeding. And I was just like, Joe, if you're going to go to your car, you need to stay over there because that guy's going to come out here. You know, he's going to come after me. And um, there were people in the parking lot. And, you know, this lady was like, oh, my God, I heard somebody's getting stabbed in there. You know, like, uh, what's going on? And I'm just like, I got stabbed. Like, like what? you don't see me bleeding everywhere. <laughs> um, and um, I told everybody to get in their cars and they needed to leave. And like, what, are, what are you still doing here? Um, did, has anybody called 911? Nobody had called yet. So that, that was bad. And, um, I got across, I got, oh, I got to the end of the parking lot where the, where the sidewalk meets the street. And, you know, I start hearing screams because he had come outside, just like I told everybody that he was going to come outside and he's looking for me. So I look back at him and then I look at myself and I look at him again. I'm like, man, can I take this guy right now? Like, not like in the condition that I'm in? Probably not. So I move across the street and um, I took my shirt off and I wrapped it around my arm and I told some people that were in the parking lot, hey, can you call 911? And um, I look back at the guy and at that point, it was just like, because he's staring at me and I'm staring at him. We're having a bit of a stare down. And it was just like, well, like, come on. At this point, you know, like, like we at this point, I'm, I might as well, you know. Like if, but if you're gonna, if you if you want some of this, you got to come across the street. And so we're we're staring down for a bit, and then um, he decides against it, I guess, and he takes a big deep breath, and he had a he had a sheath for his uh, his machete. Um, he sheathed it, and he started walking um, southbound away from the Starbucks and away from me. And um, he was walking, you know, really fast, like, OK, I got to get out of here. And um, uh, all of a sudden I start hearing sirens like and they're really close. And I'm like, holy crap. And I look and basically our highway patrol was at a Chipotle across the street. I guess they were having lunch. So they just happened to be there. So when the call came, finally came through. It, you know, it was just like one of those all units calls and they're like, what the heck? That's across the street. So they, you know, they drop everything they're doing and they barrel down the street. And, um, you know, the guy was out of sight, but uh, apparently, you know, from all the blood of mines that was on the machete, it was leaking through the sheath. So they followed the trail to some bushes um, that was that were around the corner and they ended up catching the guy. They, they caught him. They, they subdued him. They took him in. And um I get across the street, back to the Starbucks, and, you know, uh, ambulances start showing up, and, you know, they're like, this guy needs, you know, treatment immediately, and I was just like, stop, 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 you know, nobody, it was like nobody, like, was listening to me, and I told them that there was a woman inside, and she had been, like, severely, severely injured, worse than, worse than me, and that they needed to go and, and help her, you know, she's probably bleeding out, so, they had one person stay with me and then another another uh, person went inside of the Starbucks to check and, you know, they found her um, and she was bleeding out. 
And so they they had everybody go away from me to go help her. And um, some people in the parking lot even helped me like tie up my leg. And I had already tied up my arm pretty good. And I had another uh, cloth on my other hand. So I was, you know, I pretty much like stopped the bleeding at that point. Well, at least halted it enough. And uh, they got the help that she needed. And then another ambulance came and then boom, they started helping me. And uh, I got to the I got to the, the the hospital and they sent me to a there's a special hospital in town. It's for, it's for trauma. And uh, they sent me there and I'm on the trauma bed and they're stitching me up and uh, and I'm hungry. Like, I'm, I'm so hungry, like because <laughs> I hadn't I still hadn't eaten at that point. And it's, uh, you know, they asked me what I wanted. And I told them I wanted pizza and they you know, they're all laughing and um, they're like, you know, we're going to be able to get you as much pizza as you want. And uh, they ended up stitching me up and I, I came out of it with uh, a little over 200 stitches on, on the arm and uh, on the leg. And then after surgery, they pretty much stapled everything together. Um, but yeah, that's that's what happened on uh, on September 9th. Yeah. <clears throat> and so what, what was the, the over, how was the recovery process since that? Um, it was a bit rough. I think uh, I went into a lot of it just thinking, like, how do how do I explain it? Like, when you get an injury for sports, right? You're uh, you're injured, but you're just like, okay, I'm gonna get through this, just physical and stuff. And that's that's where I I underestimated things, you know, because um, uh, the physical has been going really well. I mean, I'm, I'm able to pretty much I'm able to really move my hand, not not to where I can ball it into a fist, but the movements coming back, the more, the more I use it and the more I, I, uh, I, I do therapy with the hand. So, um, the, the, the hand is coming back, but, uh, the mental of it is something I definitely underestimated. Um, just cause you're, if you, uh, imagine being a, a, a social butterfly, right. And then you get into a situation like that and it just makes you shut off from the world. Like, like your, your bubble go, goes from being, you know, miles wide to, to skin tight. You know, you know, you don't want anybody. Like at, at first it was like, anytime anybody touched me, it was kind of like, hold on, you know, my, my body was going through a bit of a, a survival arc, you know, um, trying to, to acclimate itself to, to, to not freaking out you know, at every, at every uh, sound or, or things like that. So, um, that was a bit rough and it was definitely something I wasn't expecting. So since I wasn't expecting it, it kind of hit even harder. Um, but the recovery has been good now. I think, I think I'm definitely doing much better, uh, um, getting out and performing again. You know, at first, you know, it was a little bit hard because I being in a space, you know, for, for a performer, you're, you're in a space where, you know, a hundred people, 200 people. So, <laughs> and, you know, like that, that was just like, holy crap, there's a lot of people, which one's an enemy, you know what I mean? Like, um, so that was a bit rough, but um, I definitely say that I've gotten past that now. Um, occasionally here and there, I'll, I'll have like, you know, some, uh, some issues and I pretty much work through a lot of the PTSD and stuff. It, it never truly goes away. You know, I'm always going to. I'm always going to go into a restaurant or something and count how many people are in there and kind of just be looking at the entrances and exits because you never know what can happen. You know, there's a, that situation was definitely one of those things where it's like, okay, this is like a one in, in 3 million chance of something like that happening, you know? So, um, normally when, when you use statistics like that, it's kind of like, okay, well, this isn't going to happen, but, but then that happened, you know what I mean? So it kind of just put it in my head now that, that anything can happen. So, you always kind of want to be prepared and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, the aftermath of things has been, uh, it was, it was a bit tricky at first. And I think a lot of it was because I was trying to be the person that I was before the incident and that was no longer possible. It's sort of like when you get to like a, a different season in your life, you know, where you, where you can't be this, this childish person or you can't be this person that you were before it just doesn't work. But for, for me, that incident kind of just, um, escalated it, you know, it made it come faster. So, um, I'm okay with, uh, with everything now. And I feel like that I'm feel like I'm ready to be the person that I'm supposed to be. Um, and that's why I'm comfortable enough to come on this podcast and tell you guys all about it. Uh, uh, 
So. We, we just have uh, some sort of, uh, we have some questions from our listeners. Oh. It doesn't seem oh, like yeah. much on, uh, we only have a few amount on Twitter. Most, uh, most of the Irish fans are usually on more of Facebook and Instagram and all that. Oh, okay. Uh, so the, the first question is, uh, how did the, you know, the anime fan community sort of react to, you know, your news? You, you must have been a local hero from. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and I, I, man, I love, I love the anime community so much. They don't even, like, I love y'all more than y'all love me. Like, seriously, um, the anime community, you know, it was like, it was like, oh, he's one of ours, you know, like, <laughs> and they're not wrong, you know, they're not wrong at all. Um, the anime community, like, celebrated it immediately, you know, and, you know, it's funny because, um, you know, after everything happened and stuff, and I was, like, getting better and, and just going back and looking at all the messages and different posts, and because I've gotten thousands and thousands of emails and messages and across all, like, all social media platforms and stuff, and so I'll go into the comments of certain things because people will be, like, there's there there are some, some haters out there, you know, for, like, just anime haters, you know? So they'll be like, well, how do you know that this guy's an anime fan and blah, blah, blah. They're just saying he is. And it's like, I would jump in the comments and be like, well, I am, you know? <laughs> so it was really cool. Um, uh, the anime community definitely jumped behind it a hundred percent and just like, you know, they got my back and I got theirs. Um, and I think that's, I think that's amazing. Like it's it's not um, it's not to say that it wasn't expected, but it's more I never thought I'd find myself in a situation like that. You know, um, uh, the anime community went wild, and I appreciate them for it. Um, you know, it led to some different opportunities, and you know, for <laughs> for my city, it's 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 one of those things to where um, you know, when things happen, especially in life right now, everything is is so microwaved. You know like uh social media will pull you in so many different directions that you'll forget about something pretty quickly you know um but for for the city it's like the city never forgets you know what i mean this the city that you live in like like your community they're never gonna forget something like that so yeah they they definitely uh they definitely hailed me as a hero um and at first it was it was hard to take accountability for that you know because i was just thinking like i mean shit, that was my mom and my sister or my cousin or something you know i would i would want somebody to do the same thing that i did you know if i if i'm on the outside looking in like <laughs> i would want somebody to help like so that's that's just how i felt about it um and you know um i was talking it's funny i was talking to somebody because they've been comparing me to uh uh to uh to deku from uh, my hero academia and um you know somebody asked me like you know what my quirk was you know and i <laughs> i don't have a quirk you know i don't have a power and if i did you know i told them uh i told them if i did it would be compassion um you know they're like it's crazy like human life is so priceless so and it, that's just how i feel about it like in and out so i would you know what i mean like i, I would do the same thing if i if i had to again and, and that's just part of accepting like who I who I am. Um, it's, it's it's not something you can just control. It's like you know my body really moved without thinking about it. You know, you know especially initially. So it's just it's not something you can control. You just have to accept it and just it's it's a part of you. The anime community just I love them to death. They love me and it just kind of all works out. Um, the city the city loves me and I appreciate all the love and support and prayers and hopes and all that stuff. And I, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to take that on. And yeah, so it was, it was kind of crazy. It just exploded. Like as soon as it, and there is another thing that kind of came out of it. There's, there was like a, a, a story that kind of went viral on it and it was, and it was saying that I was wearing like an all might shirt, um, during the uh the the incident and i, I wasn't wearing an all my shirt um <laughs> like i don't know where that like like had came from i i do have a bunch of like when i do my photo shoots and that's you know that's that's where anime really comes in for my music and stuff i i'm i'm not a wave writer i i want to give back to the anime community and show people that it's okay to watch anime and do different things like that that does not make you a freak so, so whenever I do my photo shoots or whenever I perform, you know, I'm, I'm usually wearing some anime apparel 
Um, and I think they got one of those pictures and just assumed, oh man, he was, <laughs> you know, he just busted in there like I am here, you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was. I, I saw that article as well, and I was kind of just like, was the shirt supposed to protect them? What happened? The, the the way that they framed, you know, he was wearing an all my T-shirt. Was the shirt supposed to be protecting him in the article? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's just it's 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 just because of what all might symbolizes. You know, he's the symbol of peace. So, um, you know, like I I get like how that came in there. Um, I didn't bust in there like I am here, or like I like I'm all might or anything. But um, either either way, it's like that was probably one of the only days you catch me with catch me not wearing an anime shirt and that was just because i woke up late and threw on whatever i could find um like <laughs> literally like all all the all the I, I i literally have one drawer in my room like for shirts that aren't anime shirts you know like <laughs> like that's it's just it's it's comfortable for me you know and it's just like i'm okay with anime just being a part of who i am so that's usually that's typically what i do so it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was strange that that came about, but it, then again, it, it also wasn't far-fetched either. Um, so yeah, that, that was, uh, <laughs> that was pretty funny. And I was just like, well, it's already everywhere. It's kind of impossible to, to debunk, debunk it. I was like, if I, if I ever talk about, you know, the situation, which this is what we're doing now, I was like, I'll just let them know. Like, I don't know where that came from. I love you guys for it, but I wasn't wearing, you know, I'll, I'm just going to be, the honest person that I am and let them know. Hey, at so, least your on my trip wasn't wrecked in the, the process. <laughs> uh, the, next, the next question we, we have is, uh, you, you mentioned that, you know, you studied a bit of martial arts. What's your favorite uh, style of martial arts? Oh, Taekwondo. That's, that's the, that's the martial art that I studied. Taekwondo. It's, it's primarily kicks, but um, there's a bunch of, I would definitely say there's a ton of like self-defense uh, mechanisms um, just littered throughout that entire martial art. And uh, that's actually what saved me from dying, to be honest, because even even with uh, like if you, I'm sure you've probably seen pictures and stuff online, but um, for my scars, they're on the, the outside of my forearm. Because when you when you're if, if you're going to use your arms to block a, a, a weapon or or you know a, sh a sharp weapon a sword or anything like that like you don't use your the the inside of your forearms because that's that's how you die you're gonna bleed out you know <laughs> um, like especially the way my scars are set up because it goes right along my arm and if you put that on the other side of my arm that's death I would have bled out like within minutes you know so. I, I knew that I needed to outer forearm block, and you learn that you you learn that in Taekwondo. Wow. Uh, <laughs> final question is, you know, you've become such a, an inspiration to a lot of people in the anime community. What advice would you give to all the other anime fans out there? Um, let's see. Don't let anybody tell you that anime is for kids or, like, you know, it doesn't have any worth or value because i can honestly say without anime without that in my life from the point like when i was a kid to now i'm not sure i would have just had the instinctual ideals in my heart to do what i did you know I'm, I'm a i'm a good person but at the same time there's so many lessons that you learn like via anime that it's like i'm not sure i'm not sure i would be that great of a person you know like i'm, I'm not sure i would have this 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 heart of gold um, without anime, so don't let anybody tell you that you shouldn't be watching anime or you shouldn't do this or you know you shouldn't do that. Like like do what you, do what you do what you want to do. And if somebody's telling you oh you shouldn't watch anime, it's not going to do anything for you. You tell them my story. Tell them my story and tell them the anime saved a life. Um, that's wow. definitely the advice that I could give. I I have had I do want to touch on another thing. I have had um, plenty of people in my inbox. Um, saying that they you know it's crazy what you did and you know I, you know i want to be a hero too one day and um it's it's definitely one of those it's definitely one of those those my hero moments where it's like you could become a hero too however you know be careful like you yeah like you you need the if anything i was probably the most qualified in inside of that starbucks that day to to do anything you know with with the training that i've had but I wouldn't just run into a situation like that on purpose. You know what I mean? Like just you're you're out searching for it. Don't don't seek out danger. 
Um, I w don't run into a situation like that if you know you just can't do anything at all. You know, like it's 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 definitely one of those things. Just don't put yourself in harm's way um, if you can if you can get around it by not doing that. You know what I mean? Like for me, there's really just no no other option. I had to do something. But um, for others, just be careful. Um, live your life. Live passionately. Um, and uh, man, like keep watching anime because it does amazing things. There's so many lessons that people overlook in anime. It's just like that's that's really that's another big difference between anime and cartoons. Like you you don't get lessons like that from SpongeBob. You know what I mean? Like like <laughs> which I like on a side note, I love SpongeBob, but. Like you don't get lessons like like you you don't learn to protect your friends from from things like that you know you don't you don't um you don't learn um selflessness from uh, cartoons so um you got any more questions uh no that's that's all my questions man okay well, thank you so much for you know being up for this interview oh yeah no absolutely um <laughs> I was just like heck yeah I'll do it you know like i I think it's a it's a good release. It's a good release, and um, I definitely feel like a lot of people, um, you know, they have questions, and and sometimes those questions need answering. Um, even especially about the anime thing, oh, I have a story. Um, I had I had uh, a supporter message me, and um, she was telling me that you know her uh, her mom was about to throw out all of her anime content. Um, and because um, she was saying that it wasn't going to do anything for her and she wasn't going to be able to be great because like anime was like overtaking her life or something like that. And her mom was going to throw away all of her content. And then this, this is literally like, I guess, a day or two before my incident happened. And then she showed her mom the, uh, the story. <laughs> and her mom actually went out and bought her more, um, more anime stuff and just told her like, OK, well, just use it for your entertainment time instead of like, instead of all the time. So she watches anime a bit less, but like, it really showed, you know, her mom that like, okay, this actually has, this, this can have a purpose. So I thought that was really cool. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Cool. So, uh, uh, just before we sort of uh, finish up with uh, the recording, I uh, hope you don't mind. Uh, we're going to put in your, your Spotify link. Oh, dope. Yeah, like, no. All your tracks, so, so all of our Irish listeners can actually hear your music. Please do. Please do. Yeah, you guys make sure you go check out the music. I actually have a sale going on my website right now, which is really cool. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to post about it once we're done with this. But um, uh, the sale is uh, it's 20% off of all uh, all items on the, the website. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a week of compassion sale. And what I'm going to do is take 10% of all the earnings over over this week that the sale is going on, and I'm going to donate it to a charity of my choosing. Um, I just thought that would be really cool. Um, you know what I mean? To to be able to give back to uh, different things in um, in my community, and uh, it's a good cause. Um, I don't know. Just uh, it's it's really all about compassion. You know, uh, there's nothing wrong with it, and I think. Uh, it's uh, compassion is one of the keys to really understanding human kindness. So thank you guys for, you know, the interview. Thank you for plugging my Spotify in there. Yeah, you guys go check out the music. You guys can find me on Instagram and all other social medias at Static Sound. That's S-T-A-T-I-C-S-S-O-U-N-D. Um, you can Google the story if you want to check it out. All you got to do is Google my name and I'm pretty sure like a gazillion articles will pop up. Uh, Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Cheers. And this is uh, Sean Nathan, and I'm signing off.